I'm very happy today, you know, yes, I'm, I write this word today on the board, please stress concrete, very first time in the history of KFU. <laughs> <laughs> and I wish people will keep on writing this word after me, then I will, I'm not sure, okay. So this is a pre stress concrete. What is pre stress concrete? You can you can use your mobile cells. I have sent you the pictures because uh, instead of Google, uh, I will go and Google the pictures by myself and show you. I have, all the record stuff is in your cell phones. So you are allowed to open your cell phones and to watch any time to your mobile cell. Okay, but don't text someone or don't use it for other purposes. So the pre stress concrete, you can see there are some bridge eye section girders on the first slide. So we have, if, if you see, if you remember the Astro type 1 and type 2 girders, so we have these types of girders. Sometimes we have bottom thick part, sometimes we have uh, like uh, the door part is more thick. So it depends upon just the type and the dimensions. So first of all, what is the history of peach stress concrete? It was first, this concept was first invented in 1888, I mean a long time ago, by P.H. Jackson, who was the first who created the first patent in the US. Now what is a patent? For example, if I make a new thing, I invented, or I have a trademark, I have a logo. So what I do, there are different bodies which just register your patents. They, they grant you, okay, you have this right, you develop this. For example, like the logo of our college okay I want that no one use this logo for his purpose or for his college or for his uh, department what I will do I will go and I will register to some body so there's a body in US which register patent for example if I make a new material I can go and I can register that this is I made this material I have the rights and that is known as patent what is that known as patent so the first patent was registered in 1888 by P.H. Jackson. So he claimed that he has the first right. He first invented this pre-stress concrete. And later on, there was an engineer, the British engineer, Frey Sinan. He defined, he further worked on his idea that, uh, the, on the pre-stress concrete and he said for the pre-stress concrete we need a pre-stress steel and that steel should be very very strong <coughs> that steel should be very very strong okay and then but he was an engineer he was not a doctor or something who, who was a highly skilled uh, or acad academic person so he did not write anything but he came up with an idea that it should be there should be a high strength steel and later on the first book was written by Mangle uh, on the pre-stress concrete okay now let's come to the what is pre-stress concrete as the name indicates pre-stress pre-stress so before putting in place we stress the concrete now the next question is that how to stress and what is the benefit any one of you? Uh, for uh, duration, like uh, we can say the term. Okay, anyone else? First of all, now what is, let me give you a concept. For example, there is a beam, concrete beam. Suppose a rectangular beam. You know there is a steel at the bottom. Okay, so what I do, 
I will place a very high strength steel or alloy steel at the bottom like this and it is not like a deformed bar these are the strands these are the strands these are not the deformed bars you can see in the pictures if you if you go to the next slides you can see these are the if you if you go to the fourth uh, fourth uh, page you can see the picture of these wires can you see yes these are the strands these are not the deformed bars very high strength uh, deformed bars so what we do we put for example this is a concrete beam what i do i put a very high strand high strength bar and i pull this bar i pull this way I'll tell you what is at the moment I'm just talking about the pre-stress. What is pre-tensioning? What is post-tensioning? I will explain you later on. Okay. First of all, just what is the concept? What is the principle? So I just pull. Okay. So I pull this, pull this, and very high tension I apply. How I can pull? It's very easy. There are very high, uh, high, high performance hydraulic jacks. I will just put a jack, you know hydraulic jack and keep on pulling with the pressure, it's, it's not a big deal to, to pull these wires so I pull from both sides, ok and then I clamp now this wire is actually having tension, a very high tension in, 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 the, in the wire you understand? Yeah. in this wire there will be very high tension so after pulling I put a clamp so that the wire now cannot move now the wire cannot move inside the concrete or I mean now the wire space so after this I cut cut from here and cut from here now what will happen so what type of force there will be in the beam now attention compression the beam yes there will be a compression force inside the beam and you know now the force is here so well, once you you apply tension but as a result as a reaction the compression force will be generated inside the beam okay so there is very high compression inside the beam the force is here so what this force will do I mean this force will produce any bending or not? This force will produce any bending or not? If this is a neutral axis, the neutral axis is here and there is a compression force here. So this force will produce any bending or not? Yes. No? Yes, it will produce a bending. And how this bending will be? It will try to bend the beam like this. Okay. So it will try to produce the. Uh, <coughs> it will try to produce a bending, and that bending is actually we call it. We will call it like a, it. It's like a camber. And this is it is upward. Now, what happened? What is the benefit of this? Well, there are the bands to be uh, such as the balance to be. Uh, yes. Now the capacity will be increased. First, you you will apply a load. So first, when you will apply the load, so first this beam due to this load, this beam will become straight. And then it will go into the other deflection procedure. And still, you know, there's a wire here which has high tension. So you, you need a very high force even to, to produce a bending in this thing. You understand? Yeah. Sure. How will we place, uh, we place put the deflected chain? We this is uh, this is a very exaggerated shape here. In reality, it is very small. You understand? 
In reality, there's a high tension here. It's just like you have a very high tension. So if you if you apply any force, so it will try to restore it. It is something uh, exaggerated or at a very high scale. I have drawn this picture. We place these shapes with the cameras. If you see the girders, for example, if you go and see the there is a camera always. Let me see. Well, you can search by yourself in the Google and you can see there is a camera. And these girders, particularly the slab panels, the T-shaped panels, they are slightly carved up. If you want to Google, you can see the you can write the camber, the pre-stress camber and you can see some images in your mobile cell phones okay so this is the main concept of pre-stress concrete and what, what are the benefits of this what are the benefits it does not increase the strength but it increases the load carrying capacity it increases the load carrying capacity can you use normal concrete for this pre-stressing you need a very strong concrete, concrete which is high strength concrete. Can you can you use ordinary steel for pre-stressing beams? No, you should use very high strength alloy steel for the pre-stress beam. So this is how the pre-stressing works. If not, what is tension? If the steel is cut in the middle of the beam, how do you kind of what's the problem? I mean, if this steel is cut from here, yeah, the force will be gone. How, but how they can now because it's already made. They can. Yeah. How it will break? I mean, for example, I know, I know that the strength of this bar is this bar will break. I know is like three hundred kilonewton. Okay. So I will put 100 kN force into this. You understand or not? Yeah. We, we are the designers. We know that. That at how much load it will break. So why I should make a doubt that it will break inside? We are the designers. This is what we are doing. Any other question? No? Now next thing is... Now there are two methods of applying this force. Number one is pre-tensioning and other is post-tensioning post-tension or post-tensioning what is the difference between these two? can you explain this to me? Size 
of the beam or the cross section is also reduced. I'm not what? Gonna... Economy, I'm, I'm not. Uh, you know, when we when we use this word economy, it's on a very broader scale. Maybe for a bigger project, yes, it could be economical. But for a small scale project, we are not sure. We have to do our cost analysis. Okay. Okay, so the next is free stress, free tension concrete. This one, free stress, free tension concrete. For example, you know. If you have visited any pre-tension steel or uh, concrete factory, so I have visited, so how they make the beams or how they make the slabs, you know how they have one very long mold, maybe like 30 meter or like 50 meter or even 100 meter, 100 meter steel mold, mold you mean cage in which we put the concrete, that is known as mold, okay. For example, let's suppose it is like 100 meter hundred meter long long steel mold. If you if you talk about the cross section, this is the longitudinal view, the cross section is like this. Okay, this is a longitudinal in, along the length. This is a cross section. So what we do in the pre-tension, we put these high strength steel strands, maybe two or three, it depends upon your design. How much uh, the number of these strands depends upon how much force you want to apply or how much is your requirement. Okay, how much force you want to resist. So what you do, you put a straight strands. Okay, and then you apply the force. You did not put any concrete and you apply the force <laughs> by a jack. You put a jack and you pull this wire from both sides. This is known as pre tension. It is known as pre tension. And then what you do, for example, now this is 100 meter long, for example, and you, you need a beam of 10 meter. What you need? You need a beam of 10 meter. So what you will do, you will make, for example, you will put maybe a steel plate here, steel plate here, maybe at the ends, and then you will like this, you will keep on putting lines of 10 meter, 10 meter, 10 meter steel plates and you will put the concrete ok and once the concrete is hard, concrete after 28 days become hard ok, then we cut from here we did cut up, we cut it here before cutting we can put a clamp before cutting we can put a clamp so it cannot you understand? So we cut one, two, three, and so on. And after those, once we cut, so what will happen? These beams will be having a pre-tension force inside them. So these types of beams are known as pre-tension concrete beams. Okay? Please stress pre-tension concrete. Do you have any question in this? Now, for this, there should be a good bond between concrete and steel, and the concrete cure, uh, the cure concrete, uh, once the concrete become hard, it, it, it 
makes a bond. For example, if you see the slide number six, you can see a factory, and in the factory you can see the steel wires going out of a mold. Can you see? Slide number six. Please see the slide number six. And also slide number seven. So just have a look on these two slides. And you know the good thing is that we we do it in the factory. It is a factory, it is not the site. There is a factory, pre-stress, pre-tension, complete factory. And we do this pre-tensioning inside the factory. And once we have like 10 beams or 20 beams prepared, we can then move these beams to the site. And there they will put on the site and they will use it. There is no need of casting on the site. So these are basically known as prefabricated. Prefabricated means the beam is already prepared in the factory and you just move it. Now what are the, some of the concerns? Okay, so the first concern you need a mold. You need this mold to uh, fabricate these, uh, uh, these beams and this mold should be very strong. This mold, because this mold has to take the force from these wires or these strands. So this mold should be significantly strong so that you, it can take the load. This is the first concern. And the, you have to, the, the second concern which is good and which you can make possible because uh, the quality of the concrete, if you are doing the concreting inside the factory, you can make sure the quality. Is it true or not? Yes. yes. Compared to the side, in the, inside the factory you can, you can have a good quality control. And the other things are not uh, uh, some of the concerns. There is one thing more, uh, which is like losses. Losses, what are the losses? I will tell you at the end. I don't want to ruin your knowledge right now. So what are the advantages of pre-tensioning? The advantage is the better control in the cross-sectional sizes. It is the last, uh, I mean the eight, side number eight. And the I mean, now this wire is fully stressed. The tension here and the tension here at every location it has a uniform tension. So what will happen? The tension is uniform all along the length of the beam. This is the one of the major benefit. That this tension, whatever tension you produce here, it is the same all along the length of the beam. For example, if this force is 100 kN, it is 100 kN everywhere inside the steel bar or steel wire. And it will be uniform along the length of the member. So this is one of the uh, advantages. Now next is the post tensioning. Now let's come to the post tensioning. So first, you tell me what is post tensioning? After the concrete uh, gets hard. Now what is post tensioning? <coughs> post tensioning. Or I just write the post. Here. It could be 
be rectangular, it could be eye, it could be of any shape, it could be a box girder, no problem. For example, along the length, if I, if I show this beam, this beam should will be look something like this. Okay. So here, what I do, I put a wire. I put a wire inside this concrete. When I put the strands inside these beams, just I put like normal strands, normal strain. I did not apply any force. I make a cage, make a mold, put these wires, okay, and put the concrete and let it hard. Let it hard for maybe uh, 28 days, or it depends upon the design, like 7 days, 14 days. And after that, I pull, I pull these wires. I pull, I pull these wires and after pulling these wires, now I put a clamp here, fix, I put a clamp, a fixer and then I cut. So what will happen? Put this on this inside the... You put it with a better material. I am putting wire, these wires, strands, cables, tendons and then the concrete become hard I, after 28 days I pull these strands I apply a clamp so that it cannot move and then I cut so what will happen? Again it will have the compression inside the beam You understand? But this compression could not be the uniform. Maybe this compression is very high here and it is gradually reducing. Do you understand or not? Like that. You understand? So this is known as post tensioning. Now there are two things. This is this type of post tensioning is known as bonded post tensioning. What what it means bonded post tensioning? Uh, so To location of the tension of the scale from the both sides. Sorry, I don't understand. And both, both sides they will both the steel. Yes. Even from the one side, well, we do it from the both sides. Which one is the best? I, I, I'll come to that. Now, if you see the slide number 10. Can you see the slide number 10? Now what is the bonded post tension concrete? Bonded post tension concrete is this what I explained to you. There is a direct contact, contact of this wire with the concrete just like steel. This is a direct contact. There is a direct contact of the, this wire with the concrete. That is known as bonded. 